What's up, everybody? Welcome, 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 welcome to Totally Fan Season 4, Episode 1. I'm super excited. All of us here at the Fan Camp are really excited to go back to our grassroots, to where we started, and it's with our Totally Fan uh, live show, or show, rather. Um, so, for those of you who are new, welcome to the Fan Cave. My name is Totally Fan, and this is a show where we talk about everything in the news, going with movies, comics, video games, TV, your fandom fanfare right here. With me is my guest and longtime uh, Totally Fan partner is Jesse. Jesse, say hi to the crowd. Hello. <laughs> is that me? Am I supposed to come on? Yeah, that's you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. It's great to be here. Oh, yeah, man. It's, uh, it's been a long time since we've done this show. And um, so real quick for, for all of you guys, uh, the way this show is going to work for moving forward is we're going to do live shows on Twitch, uh, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then um, if you miss the live show, we'll have pre-recording, uh, pre-recorded content released throughout the week. Um, so like we'll have a podcast segment uh, near the end. You'll be able to watch that in its entirety. And then our little news section, which is going to take up the first five minutes of the show, uh, we'll go over that and you'll be able to do that kind of, it's like a weekly news update in terms of what's going on in the world of, of fandom. Um, Jesse, I mean, it's been what, like five years since we've done this? Like, how you feeling, man? You ready? Feeling pretty good. Are you? Can't see your face, though. You can't see my face. Oh, it's because yeah. on Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you're beautiful today, though. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I was going to take my hat off, but my yeah. hair is all kinds of like messed up. So, uh, uh, yeah, a yeah. hat tip, if hat you tip. will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Discord call, I think, is also going to jack up the stream. So, we're going to hold off on that. However, I'll, I'll just imagine what yeah. you look like. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, by the no. way, uh, doesn't have a webcam. So unfortunately, that's why we don't have his beautiful mug over here. Instead, we have this. Uh, what are you talking about? That's what I look like. We have this beautiful illustration that's a lifelike rendering of what Jesse looks like. So I mean, you forgot the muscles, but, you know, pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got some, some raging biceps. Oh, is that right? I work on my glutes. Never skip leg day. <laughs> Like day is important. It's actually I'm yeah, not a, heck yeah. It uh, it's for me especially doing martial arts and stuff. Like I really want to be able to jump higher and like be able to do more of the like flips and stuff like that. So like like day is super important. Yeah, and I'm I'm a certified nerd, so I got toys in the background too. I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, let's see. Um, to start off, uh, we got some new toys, but I don't remember how they work. All right, cool. So to start off. Uh, Blue Sky Studio, um, they're known for properties such as Ice Age. Uh, they did the new Spies in Disguise and a couple other things. Uh, they're actually going to be closing down soon. Disney, uh, Jesse, correct me if I'm wrong, but Disney, Disney bought them out as, or acquired them as part of the Fox deal. And I believe because of the coronavirus and everything going on with the pandemic, um, they're actually going to be closing down that studio and... To be honest, they're probably doing it in favor for Pixar and having Pixar have like the reins on what it is that they're going to be doing moving forward with their animation stuff. Uh, but I did read that they are going to try to integrate some of the animators from Blue Sky Studio into their Pixar. Um, I mean, it's just they have three animation studios and it's not it's not Blue Sky's fault. You know, mm -hmm. they were bought by an outside entity, which is, you know, the Mouse House. So it's, they want to control the world slowly but surely. Um, they just were like, you know, why do we need three full-time animation studios? And there, Who's the third? it sounds like there's, well, Blue Sky, Disney Animation, and then Pixar. Oh yeah, Disney Animation. So yeah. like, you know, Disney Animation by itself was like the big one, and and then they got Pixar, and then now, you know, it's like, well, well what do we do with them? So you know, their last couple of movies haven't been doing that great, mm -hmm. but. You know, it just kind of sucks for, for everyone involved, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I know they're going to try to, like, get them into other studios. But, you know, that's never a guarantee. Right. But uh, it sounds like they're going to continue with, because they, they still own the licenses to all the characters. So they could theoretically make an Ice Age movie with Pixar. Actually, um, to I be honest, I, a, I thought, weren't they doing a show, too, with Ice Age? Yeah, they're doing a, a I think it's a Scrat show on Disney+. Plus. Okay. So I don't know who's animating that, but not Blue Sky. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Yeah. I like Blue Sky. I thought they were cool. Yeah. Um, nice. So like there's, there's DreamWorks. 
um, there's Blue Sky, and then there's like Pixar is like the top three, um, like animation studios. Um, so I agree with you. The last couple of movies from Blue Sky haven't been all that great. I did recently watch um, Spies in Disguise though, and I thought it was okay. Um, but there's there's some. I don't know how to explain it, but there's something that Pixar does better than all the other animation studios, which makes it like far superior in my opinion. And I'm not saying that just because I believe in our Lord and Savior Disney Plus, but um, <laughs> but the Blue Sky Studios has some really cutie type of animations, um, some really family family oriented stuff that's like really good for all ages. But just overall. Uh, it make it doesn't make sense for Disney to keep running them when when just the pandemic is going on, right? I'm pretty sure if we were in a better situation, Blue Sky would continue, and, and we probably get more content from them. But it's just ultimately it's it's a it's a power play from Disney's point of view. And and I mean, plus Disney Disney wants franchises, so you think Blue Sky obviously Ice Age, <laughs> but that was it. I mean, they didn't have a lot of powerhouses. They had Rio like one and two, and then the rest of their movies were just you know, singles, mm-hmm. like, or just single, single movies. Right. They and Rio 2, Rio 2 of, came out a long time ago. Like, yeah, like it's they been a long time. Yeah, like, they could recapture that franchise magic. You know, DreamWorks has, you know, you could, you could list all their franchises. I think that's what Disney wanted. So maybe if their movies were sort of more, like, powerful, maybe they would have kept them. Right. But, I mean, it's, right now, it's just, it's just Ice Age, so. I'm disappointed <laughs> I can't see Ice Age 9, but, you know. <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> Ice Age Nine. <laughs> Heck yeah. No, but I mean, oh, I'm sorry, Ice Age Eleven. Eleven. I'm pretty sure it's it's uh, Ice Age Fifteen, but I'm just gonna throw that out there. It's like Madden. <laughs> yeah. Just put one out every year. All right. Uh, next. Uh, hold on. I got these power plays. Next. Uh, Powerpuff Girls is going live action. Um, their series got a plot order from, I believe it was CW. So they make the Arrowverse shows, which are pretty good. Um, they've also made shows like, uh, what's it called? The Archie Show. Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, but they they have that show and they have a couple other things too. And it seems like this adaptation this live action adaptation of like cartoons is something that's like growing in popularity and i don't know if it's a trend in terms of like where tvs are or where tv shows are going to start following um but it's something that like i know on netflix they've been doing like adaptation of riverdale last one thank you man (laughs) riverdale last one yeah so they did the live action riverdale um and i know that there's some other stuff that's coming on netflix i believe uh, where they're going to be doing live action adaptations of those. So, is this a, is this a strong move? Is is this something that you think could be re- done really well by the CW? Considering that the Arrowverse, in my opinion, is pretty good. Um, I don't know, just because Power of Girls is really iconic, and it's something that like you know the the whole iconography of Power of Girls has to come from the animation and. So this is definitely something interesting to see. And uh, I'm kind of curious as to what's your take, Jess? Well, I'm not a 15-year-old girl, so I'm probably going to hate it. Um, the CW, whenever they, you know, readapt something. Well, Powerpuff Girls was dope, though. Hold on, wait well, a minute. Well, the Powerpuff Girls are dope, but not CW's Powerpuff okay. Girls. Because you know they're going to age them up to, like, 25-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're going to be, like, these kind of preppy teens that just walk around you know like they did with with riverdale and riverdale has this like niche audience where it's clearly the comics archie is way different than this cw archie Mm -hmm. so i feel like they're just they just want to cash it in so it's gonna be hit or miss i mean you know if it's the arrowverse is cool um but i don't know this like they tried to reboot powerpuff girls once already and they kept it in in the cartoon format and it wasn't as good so I what think do you think led to that? Trying something what, else. What do you think led to that? Because like for me, I think part of it was like the animation, um, but just the what led to it sucking. Yeah. Well, they didn't invite the original voice actresses back. That's that that was definitely one. a huge thing. Yeah, that that's definitely <laughs> that's, that's huge a huge thing. One. They don't have the same charm or character. It's just you know. So. Yeah. I don't know. No, I agree to those points, and and I think ultimately, like I said. 
I'm I like the Arrowverse. I don't know if it's like if that's what DC needs to do with their movie verse. Like I'm not saying it's that great, but I definitely enjoy the Arrowverse a lot. And it's so I feel like they have a good team. But I agree with you. I think with the Powerpuff Girls, because um, there are reports that that's what they're going to go for is like a more like a not teeny bopper, but definitely yeah, like a edgy, young adult. Edgy yeah, dark. edgy young adult feel for the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. And so I'd be I'm curious to see what the first episode would be like, because um, we do have like a small synopsis. And basically it's um, kind of like after years of being heroes and they kind of, I guess, like went their own way and now they're struggling with like trying to live in the real world as superheroes and then uh, uh, like villains i guess are going to start popping back up and so they have to decide whether they unite as a family and as a superhero team or do they just keep dealing with whatever shit that they're dealing with so based on that already it it's very it's very cw <laughs> I agree. Yeah, like it's I, very I'm, CW. Yeah, again, I'm not. I'm not a 15 year old girl. All right. So I'm sure 15 year old girls will like it. Uh, but probably, we'll yeah. I but mean, I, they I'm, don't have. If they don't have Mojo Jojo and Fuzzy Lumpkins in it, then it's already you know it's already passed. It's a, yeah. Passed. Well, I'm pretty sure Mojo Come Jojo on. would be a big villain, and they probably wouldn't reveal him. They're until gonna make. Mid-season. I guarantee you, 20 bucks right now. They're gonna make him human. He's not gonna be a monkey. That would be. They're gonna make his so hey, make him like a professor, and he's totally human, and that's they're they're not gonna. Yeah, if they don't keep anything canon, I would I would no, probably not. lose my shit, and I would like, probably. It's, it's the CW, like they, their budget is already so low. Like, you know, there's a reason in the Flash, Gorilla Grodd is only in like one episode per every other season because just to have a full CG character running around in a CW show. Yeah. Like that's like half their budget right there. Yeah. So there is absolutely no way Mojo Jojo is going to be an actual monkey. He's going to be just some like hacker yeah. named like Robert. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Michael Jones and his name is MJ or something dumb. <laughs> so, whatever. Michael Hard John bad. Jones. <laughs> yeah, like they're going to yeah. They call him Mojo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that boy on that Mojo, he needs some milk. <laughs> Alrighty. So next, uh, actually, Jesse, we're gonna let you take it away this time. Uh, but next is gonna Ooh, be. Oh, I some, get my own segment. Yeah, we're gonna give Jesse his own thing. So go ahead and. Uh, what are we sharing? What today? are we talking about? Are we talking about Sanic. You know, talk about Sanic. Heck yeah, Sanic! Guess how old Sanic is this year? Uh, let's see. If I'm 31, I'm nah, gonna guess go. he's 30. There you go. He is 30 years old. That's my boy. 30 years old, starting a family. <laughs> so Sega Sega has big plans for Sonic's uh, 30th anniversary. Um, we don't know what those are. They've been teasing at it pretty much all of last year, and then you know the pandemic hit. I was pretty sure they were going to announce something, but then you know everything went to poop. Hmm. So um, last week um, there was a big uh, Sonic leak of what they were planning to do. Now, usually all these leaks are complete BS. Um, they're just, you know, people on Reddit that type stuff. But what's significant like about bets. this leak? Yeah, like <laughs> what's significant about this is this is a well-known leaker who's predicted um, stuff that has actually happened. Like he predicted the uh, Mario All-Stars 3D collection that came out. He predicted um, uh, multiple Nintendo Directs. So, you know. Does he it's have like elite. like is he a Nintendo insider or like do you know he's, if he's got he's more of a Nintendo insider, um, but he actually got a cease and desist order from Nintendo to stop leaking Nintendo stuff. Ooh. So we know he's legit. Yeah, you know this isn't just some random guy. Yeah, but then again, I mean, you know he's been wrong on some stuff as well. Well, I mean, but it, at it's any fun point to speculate. Yeah, I, I mean, like at any point in time, somebody who has this information. Um, it could be like, you know, they don't know how deep they're, they're in, in the product development aspect of this, um, of that project. Like they don't know if they're in pre-production, they don't know if they're just in like the developmental stages. So at any point in time, that information can change. But the fact that he's been pretty spot on and that he has been right, uh, preemptively to a lot of stuff that has happened, I think does give him a lot of credit. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, the big thing is, and, and some of this news is slowly starting to be confirmed. Uh, one of the big things was that 
Uh, they essentially want to do a soft reboot on the franchise, which is why all of the voice actors uh, got fired <laughs> or left. I don't know. There's there's mixed uh, signals with that, but and that was pretty not, big news too. Actually, yeah, they're when not the main they're not guy. voicing their characters anymore. It's been about ten years since um, those voice actors have been put in place, and it seems like anytime they want to kind of just do a reset, you know, they'll just kick all the voice actors off. Mm-hmm. So this kind of goes hand in hand with that. So basically, there's three titles that are going to be coming out next year. Uh, the big one is a Sonic uh, HD collection, similar to the Mario collection. Um, so that would be all of the classic Sonic games. And then he throws out um, some like weird ones. Like the goal is to have, like you know, everyone's played Sonic One, Two, and Three, and those have been released like on every platform for the last like 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, they're trying to release Sonic games that you can't actually play anymore, like. Sonic Advance, like the Game Boy Advance uh, mm. versions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sonic, Sonic Pocket Spinball? Adventure, which is like a Neo Geo color game, which is like just a wacky, you know, wacky game. And then Sonic R, you know, which is only released on the Sega Saturn and then had a PC release like a year later. And then I think was on the GameCube as, as one of those collections. But I mean, again, that's been it's 10 been years. something years yeah. since anyone. So it really seems like they want to sort of release like re-release all the sonic games in in some kind of package um it's been a while since there was a sonic focused collection like there's always been sega genesis collections that have sonic like one and two and like spinball um he did mention that uh sonic 3 is still not included which i don't know if anyone knows the history on that that is a big uh a big cluster of mess um, considering the music, there is some music licenses uh, issues going on with uh, Michael Jackson and the guy who wrote the, uh, the the themes for the zones. Oh um, yeah, I remember the, that. Yeah, the, the guy is is actually has a lawsuit against Sega right now for I think royalties or something. They don't want to talk about it. They they don't like talking about it. So ever since I think 2011, which was the Xbox 360 release or the Steam release, they haven't re re released Sonic 3 in anything. There's been two or three Genesis collections out and they never have Sonic three. And that's literally just because of the music, because I think the, uh, the Michael Jackson estate is fighting something. And, and the guy who actually created, cause he was a producer of Jackson. So they would work together to create the music, but that's a big, a big issue. So it, it kind of sucks that we're not getting a proper like re-release of Sonic three. Right. Cause I think that's the best game like ever, mm-hmm. ever made. What, what were your that. thoughts on mania? I like Mania. I thought it was cool. Um, mm-hmm. He actually mentioned that uh, they're doing a new a new 2D Sonic, mm. but it's in the vein of the Sonic Rush titles for like the uh, DS and 3DS. Oh, they don't. Okay. They don't want because Mania was so popular because it was basically created by fans yeah. and used like the classic art and the classic Sonic. Yeah. They they don't they want to move away from classic Sonic, which I think might be a mistake. Um, they want to really focus on the modern Sonic now. Because they, they, you know, it's like they they did it for a little bit. They had Sonic Generations and Sonic Forces, and the, you know, Class of Sonic was kind of hanging around. But they really want to move forward. They don't want to keep going back to the past. Uh, I don't know how that's going to turn out game wise because you know the last couple of Sonic games have been doo doo on a stick. Mm-hmm. But they want to make a new 2D game featuring exclusively the modern cast, which uh, might be developed by Dimps, which is the uh, former developer of the Sonic Advance series and Sonic Rush and all those weird ones. So, so I don't know. Everyone wants like a Mania 2, which I think would be awesome, but I think they want to move away from that. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the first. That's the second one. So the first one is a Sonic HD collection. Second one's a new 2D Sonic. And then the third one is the next like mainline 3D Sonic. So the past couple of titles have been what i like to call like boost games where you know you, you hold the x button and you just go like super fast and you blow through everything mm-hmm. that started with what sonic unleashed then they had uh sonic colors generations and uh forces was kind of that boost gameplay mm-hmm. and everyone wants sonic adventure 3 because sonic adventure 3 is just the adventure series it's just what made those 3d games yeah. you know the ability to just 
roam around wherever you want to like spin dash to just yeah it's basically like, like an like open a, like world platformer yeah like open world like sandboxy type yeah yeah like not to say the you know the boost games are bad it's just like you yeah. hold x to run and then you're just sitting there waiting for you to run through everything and then and then that's it so it's funny because um, my brother my brother made a jo- so i was playing overwatch last night and my brother made a joke about mercy about how you're just holding the trigger the entire time <laughs> and and much. you you know this, no, he's not wrong. <laughs> so, so th- this rumor has been, I, I, I feel like people who make this claim is just throwing it out there in the hopes that they'll be right one mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. And this one is that they're finally going to go back to the adventure style of games. They, he doesn't explicitly say that it's Adventure 3. I don't think they'll ever call it that. I think it'll just be called something else. But they want to go back to the multiple characters, uh, the adventure style gameplay, you know, level select, able to free roam. That's what they're uh, going for mm-hmm. right now. So that's pretty much the big leak that happened last week. I guess we'll see yeah. whether or not it comes true. But I'm I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really Sanex my, my boy. Yeah, he's my homeboy. I, I'm really interested in any of like the 2D stuff that they do decide to bring over, if at all. Um, I like I remember watching the old like animated cartoon show on on. For us, it was UPN twenty. Um, and then, and this was before like Sonic, um, what is it? Sonic GX or whatever on Fox kids. This was like way before it. This is the old school stuff when Sonic was voiced by Tevin Campbell. Um, and then they had like that one spinoff that was on the USA network where, um, Sally was like brought into the 2d, uh, world. And then, yeah, there's just, no, it wasn't Sonic underground. It was definitely before that. Um, it was much, well, it had much older than that. Adventures of Sonic. It was Adventures Sonic of Sonic Underground, and then the there other was one another was one, though. It was just called Sonic, like Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, then yeah, that, that was the third one. Yeah. yeah, I definitely remember those, and and uh, I was I really enjoy those a lot. So I would love to, and even I uh, I had Sonic CD for um for Sega CD, and the intro to that was really good. Like I really enjoyed that intro. Yeah, that's the so best intro I ever. really yeah, so I really want to see more of that type of content, but. We'll see. All that stuff is really kind of up in the air um, for now. I really, I agree with you. And I think that, that they should definitely look at what it is that made the money, like uh, Sonic Adventures, some of the animated stuff. And then from there, um, just produce more content. And if you want to give it that 3D like feel or look, then go for it. But like, I, I, I don't know. It's one of those things that's like, like the whole thing, like retro, retro is in kind of mentality, you know, especially right now for the older generation where that's where most of people are getting their money from right now is I think is what they should yeah, do. Yeah, but the 3D Sonics are retro. That's like 99. No, it is. It is. And I definitely agree. But I mean, like some of the newer stuff, like. That was the I, best crystal I ever had. I woke, I woke up. I had a Dreamcast sitting there under the tree. Sonic Adventure. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> this best, guy. Best Christmas ever. All right. And uh, lastly here. Uh, shit. Let's see. All right, lastly here. All right, DC is expanding their uh, comic book line. Um, they're relaunching a popular title known as uh, Milestone Comics. Milestone Comics includes a lot of their um, characters of color. Uh, one of the big ones is Static Shock. I actually just found out about this, I think, a couple of days ago when an artist that I follow on Instagram posted character designs by um, character designs of Static Shock with official DC, like, DC Comics logos and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, okay, if he's working uh, with them, then some really cool stuff's about to happen then. And through there, I discovered that um, they announced that in May, they're gonna be uh, launching these new titles. And uh, I think it's gonna be really great just because these are really popular characters that DC kind of hasn't really been, in my opinion, based off what I've seen, I haven't really seen them go into these characters a lot just because of, um, like when they relaunched New 52 and then they went another way after that, I think a lot of it had to do with um, them trying to keep everything in line with their movies and stuff like that. So, you know, comics is always good and I'm really excited for new stories. Um, In particular, definitely excited about New Static Shock just because I really enjoyed his show uh, growing up and uh, I learned more about the character after the show. So it's, it's really cool. I'm really excited to see what comes out of that. Uh, in addition, they're going to be uh, expanding on characters that we already know and love. They're getting their own lines. So it's just going to be, again, it's just an expansion. These expansions come out in May, although I believe now they started sprinkling some of the character 
uh, information or stories and stuff like that. In April, we're going to see a big push, but uh, officially, like everything's going to be going on in May. So, really interested in that. Yeah, I could care less. Yeah. I'm not a big comic nerd. That's uh, fine. <laughs> it's fine. The, uh, the show covers well, I, everything. I so I didn't. I didn't grow up with comics. Like uh, I grew up with video games and and cartoon shows. So mm. like I love the uh, the animated Batman series. I love Static Shock on Kids WB. But I could just never get into like the comics. Mm-hmm. So anytime like Marvel DC comes out with new comic lines, I'm just like, yo, show me the movie. Show me the cartoon. <laughs> show me the animation. Oh. Like you know, same in school. I don't want to read. I want to watch the movie. Yeah. No, but I but mean, I'm happy for them. Yeah, I mean, DC, I, you know, they have very strong characters and strong plots, and you know, that's definitely something. Like, I, I wish them success. Even though I'm much more of a Marvel fan, I still wish DC success, and and I think this is gonna help them out. Um, so definitely, we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll keep tabs on it. But ultimately, what I want to happen is for you guys to be in charge, right? You guys in the fan cave. If there's anything specifically that you guys want us to talk about, if there's anything crazy going on in the news that maybe we like looked or sorry overlooked or heard or read about but maybe we're not doing it in the episode i want you guys to let us know so please make sure that if you're watching on youtube make sure you like comment and let us know down below um we're going to be posting this in podcast formats on multiple platforms if there's a comment section definitely do so there make sure you know if you're down to join the discord we do a lot of community engagement and stuff like that in the discord and that would be a really great way for you to input whatever it is you guys want to see or want to talk about. And uh, when we do, eventually we want to get into more um, like reviews and things like that. And definitely we would love to hear like, what are your thoughts? What are your theories? Things of that nature. So definitely feel free to do that. Uh, But now we've reached that part of the show where we're going to take it real easy. We're going to go now into a more podcast type feel. Um, And we are literally just going to talk about whatever the hell you guys want to talk about. So Jesse, anybody catch WandaVision? It was pretty dope. Yeah, I like WandaVision. Yeah, WandaVision yeah, is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of spoilers, so you know we're not going to get too far into it. Um, but keep in mind going forward that that's, that's going to be something that's going to happen. So we have this uh, awesome little here transition into spoiler alerts. Uh, this is going to serve as a double purpose for YouTube. It's also going to serve for you guys here when we get into those conversations. Um, so, uh, yeah, one division. There's a lot of stuff going on, and uh, the big bad theory keeps like. At first, I thought they were going to do Mephisto because we know Mephisto's in the MCU. He was referenced in a report. I think I want to say Age of Ultron, or uh, I think earlier. Um, But there's a report where Mephisto's name is mentioned. And then the first couple episodes, they have a lot of references to, like, the devil. Um, There's also the missing character of Ralph, the wife of, or sorry, the husband of Agnes. Uh, So, like, who the fuck knows, right? But then all of a sudden, there's talks about, oh, it's her, it's Wanda, it's her, it's her. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe Wanda's the bad guy. Maybe her grief you know she's causing all of this but Dude, now she's clearly causing it what are we talking about i don't know man because that like so, it's very plainly they're not doing a fake out they're not doing oh she's the victim she's clearly <laughs> controlling everything i definitely think that she you know, i mean they I, can't <laughs> well this is the thing i definitely think that she's in charge right but i think she's being manipulated into creating what's happening right i i, I don't think she's doing it just because i think she, I think the character is smarter than that. But I think because of her grief and her anguish and and all that pain, that there's something happening to her in which she believes that she's in charge, but doesn't like subconsciously doesn't know what's happening because, um, so two episodes ago, um, there was the knock on the door vision looks at wanda and wanda specifically states that wasn't me and then she goes to open the door and then you see quicksilver right but the fact that she said it wasn't me and her reaction to seeing Pietro, that has me thinking like maybe it's not wanda maybe it's something else 
I am starting to believe the fan theory that it's all and I have a transition for fan theory. That's not working. Some bitch, I gotta fix it. Um, but there's a What's going on, man. I don't know, man. I I, I put good work into these transitions. What, yeah, they look good. Doing? Hold on, I gotta fix it. But anyways, um what I think happened is that um I think it's Agnes that might be in charge. There it is. There's a fan theory right there. Yeah, I think it's Agnes that's in charge. Um, I think she's the one who is playing the game. I think she's the one who has control of what's happening. And I think when it came to her conversation with Vision, I think she kind of played dumb. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he reads minds. Like he wiped her mind and like read it. Don't, don't you think he would like figure that out? The but he doesn't he read that? minds though. He's not a telepath. I think what he just did was Dude, just, he does a little finger thingy. Yeah, does I think finger what finger he did was like unlock, like kind of unlock whatever. Dude, he can read minds. We talking about <laughs> whatever. But yeah, I think I think it could be Agnes that's in charge. However, um, I'm really excited to see who this mystery character is, who this mystery uh, engineering friend is. There's a lot of uh, speculation that uh, what's the basis of Agnes being in control? Uh, so the fact that a lot of the time they kept saying her, she's in charge. And there was a character who I can't remember. I don't remember if it was this episode or the last episode. But somebody mentioned her not in correlation with Wanda. So, like, the fact, like, who is this mystery her, right? Like, that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, I don't know if, if it's true or not, and I'd be more than happy to rewatch the episode just to be a little bit more specific on what I think it is. But it's, it's there. It's, it's curious, and I'm, and I'm interested in seeing who it could be. Additionally, too, there's the missing, uh, the missing character who's the missing, um, the missing witness person that Wu was looking for. You know, I'm curious about that as well. Because I don't know if that's Ralph. I don't know if um, that's uh, Pietro or this version of Quicksilver. Who knows? The other thing, too, is another theory that I that I've, I heard that I, I kind of am interested in finding more is when, when Quicksilver was introduced in outside of the Hex, there was uh, an intruder alarm that was going off and everybody was getting ready to scramble to go figure it out. But before they did, Darcy goes to the computer and she's watching on TV that Pietro was at the door. So like, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of like underlaying layers of just potential things that are happening that I'm really curious to see. But yeah, uh, going back to what I was saying, the engineer, whoever this engineer is, um, there's a lot of speculation that it could be Reed Richards, um, and this could be uh, just a brief intro to the Fantastic Four, but it, we're not sure yet how that's going to work. Um, obviously, you know, Marvel is keeping a tight lid on all their stuff, so, but it'd be curious to see who this engineer is, because even if it's not Reed Richards, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Paul Bettany, the guy who plays Vision, uh, has said in a couple or said in an interview, and I think it was like a pregame for the launch of WandaVision, um, where that there's a really big uh, actor that he's always wanted to work with that he's never been able to, that like he hasn't worked with him before. Um, and he's supposed to play like some, I don't want to say God tier, but like he's supposed to be like a really big deal. So obviously it's not going to be a previous Avenger. I'm curious if it could be our introduction into the Submariner. That would be really cool. But, um, you know, we don't know what's going to what's going to happen with him. I'm also curious if it could be a character that's going to be that's going to be a tie in or like an expansion into the to the MCU. Uh, maybe somebody from Shang-Chi or who knows? It could be a new villain. Like, I don't know. It could be Dr. Doom. It, it'd be crazy. And I'm really excited and very interested in seeing on who this, uh, who this potential character is going to be and what role he's going to play on the MCU proper. Um, but I know that this whole, like, the whole MCU is, is going to be fucking insane with, with what's going to happen with Spider-Man, with what's going to happen with Dr. Strange, 
It's crazy. Jesse. I agree. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. What were you saying? Uh, Jesse, come on, man. Something about Mind Stone and Vision. D- I definitely oh, didn't Spider-Man say Spider-Man Multiverse. Heck yeah. Heck I didn't, yeah. definitely didn't say anything about, uh, about what do you call it? What's your favorite soft drink? Surge. Surge? Ah, oh, yeah. we need to get some Surge. Yeah, dude. It's been a while. I think they took that out of Burger King. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah, I think so. They had they had it for a couple of years in the, in the fountains. Actually, oh, uh, the last time I went to Burger King was, I think, like late last year. Or no, I think it was early last year. And uh, they had Surge. So if they took it out, it must have been very recent. They're bringing back uh, High C Orange to all McDonald's locations. So I'm pretty hyped for that. High C Orange? Yeah, that, that, they took that away like four years ago, and they're bringing that back. Oh, I, I don't go to McDonald's, so. You look like you go to McDonald's. No, I definitely don't. Wait, you're, you're a Wendy's guy? Definitely a Wendy's guy. Yeah, Wendy's is better. <laughs> I like their burgers better. Yeah, their burgers and their fries are better. I mean, McDonald's just has nuggets. I think that's all they got. Their Big Mac kind of kind of is just all right. Yeah. What do you think the commercials have to do with WandaVision? Do you think... The Hail Hydra stuff is like a red herring. I think, to be honest, the the guy that is in the commercials, I think could either be Ralph or could be like the human form of Mephisto, like the like a disguised form of Mephisto. Um I think I don't I think it could be a red herring. I think it's just it's a way for the production to make it look more like a TV show by putting a commercial there. And I think that a lot of the, I think a lot of the, what do you call it? The, the products are like Easter egg tie-ins to something that happened in the spider, or not in the spider verse, but happened into like the MCU proper. I think the, the Strucker watch is just the connection to Strucker. I think the, the, there was a theory that the clock or that the little red beeping light in the first trailer or first commercial um, could be a tie into the bomb that exploded um, in front of uh, Pietro and Wanda. And I think it's what killed the parents. Um, and then the, the like boy or whatever that was on the Island that was like just slowly dying over time. I think it's, I think it serves almost like as a timeline remembrance of Wanda in her life, I think. I'm not sure. This is just speculation. But I think it's uh I think it's like a tie-in to like to her to her life. I think like yeah. That's that's really I mean, she's the one cre- she's the one creating everything for yeah. all intents and purposes. She's actively manipulating everything like whether or not some outside force whispered in her ear and told her to do it she's the one that has the magical fingers mm-hmm. and can do everything so all the commercials are is basically yeah like little memories and visions of her life like the the little toaster that like beeps like a like a bomb yeah you know what wh- wh- uh, what company was that from that's a stark industries toaster which the missile from age of ultron was you know stark tech yeah so, and, and, and Pedro specifically Hydra said it just, yeah that yeah, that was a huge thing they, they were staring they were kidnapped at it by hydra brainwashed you know it's all just kind of her you know she needs something to to sort of put out there and it's just just her sad sad life they're just sort of memories popping in in some way yeah i think exactly that's what that's what it is now you know these last three episodes are going to be fucking insane and it's definitely possible that those commercials will actually have a deeper meaning but as of right now there's nothing for me to believe that it's anything more than just like little snippets back into her past and I'm actually curious. So, like in some of the trailers, we keep we keep seeing um, like a, a alternate perspective of how when she was looking at the Mind Stone that it gave her powers. So I'd be very curious to see if that is in a commercial itself. I think that would be interesting. Um, but if it ends up being an actual like segment, or like you know she has a, a little a little um, flashback. That would be, that'd be interesting. But I don't know. 
It's a crazy show, though. It's a crazy show. It's it's really good. I, it's funny, like people were were trying to slam it at first, but then like you know, once you give it time, and that's the thing, yeah, you right? Gotta, you got to like, hang in there. Definitely. Yeah. The, the thing is, and and I've said this before, but like we as as a culture, like fans as a culture, um, we're so quick to like bash things and like we demand we demand comic book accuracy and and all this other stuff. But then once the content comes out, they're like, oh, man, that was pretty good. Or I really enjoyed it, especially coming out of Marvel. When has Marvel ever let you down apart from maybe the first two Thor movies? In humans. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Uh, but that but wasn't he, their fault. That was Marvel TV. That wasn't Marvel Studios. Yeah. And so even then, I liked not it. Their fault. I liked it. I didn't love it. I thought there was a lot that could have been done better. Uh, but I thought it was okay. I, I thought it was a. I just wanted more. I, I, I didn't want. I didn't want that TV. Formulaic type of feel to the episode that I feel like a lot of TV shows have. I think that's why the the Netflix shows did really well was because it was it was basically like a one hour movie. Of, yeah, Netflix of those shows heroes. had Netflix budget, you know. I mean, yeah. regardless of who is producing it, you're still airing on TV. You got you got TV budget. You know, those Netflix shows like could yeah, they were like 6-hour movies essentially. Put the whole season together, that was one whole, you know, one whole movie. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. Um shows look incredible. Agents of Shield. Yeah, I haven't seen the last season of Agents of Shield, but apparently it doesn't matter anymore cuz it's no longer connected. But um Heck no. But even then, I liked I liked Agents of Shield. I thought it was good. I definitely thought that it, it picked up after like season two. But, but I don't know, man. I mean, I've I've always said it is like we as a culture like we demand a lot, and a lot of people were like, I don't know what you thought One Division was going to be, but if unless you, you know, like the hardcore diehard fans were were paying attention to what was happening behind the scenes. We're paying attention to even casting news. So, like, totally fan, uh, show-wise, we've never really dug deep into celebrities. That's not what I want to do with the show. But when it comes to casting, uh, certain casting choices that may affect the universe or the movie-verse, uh, then, you know, we'll bring it up. And in this particular case, the casting for what's been happening with Spider-Man and what we know is going on with Doctor Strange and then how there's, you know, like, it... You can start connecting the dots, right? Almost like you have that whiteboard wall and like that the red, you know, threads, and you're just starting to connect everything. So there was huge implications of what WandaVision was going to do for the MCU proper. And me as a fan, I was really excited about that because of what this was going to explode into. Whether or not the show was going to be good remained to be seen. But you know, and looking back at at the first episode from where we are right now, like this is great. This is, it, 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 it's a cool, the show itself is like a giant Easter egg to like all those sitcoms that we grew, well, that I grew up with. So I love that aspect to it, but you got to pay attention to like the, to like in between the lines to really appreciate the show and to appreciate what it's doing and what it's going to do for like the whole universe. Right. And, uh, and some people just, they forget that they, and I forget it too. Sometimes don't get me wrong. There are plenty of times when, when I've forgotten that, but it is, I don't know. I think it's a great show. I'm really excited for what's happening. The last three episodes, I think are going to be really cool. Um, I don't know. And I don't really think that it's going to play, um, that much of a impact into what's going to happen with, um, with Captain or with a Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I think there is going to be some cross streaming of information and of events, but I don't think it's going to be that like correlator that really hardcore related. So I, I'm interested in to seeing more and like how it's going to connect and collide. WandaVision is so far fantastic and feels refreshing in the TV world. No, nah, I definitely agree. Definitely agree. All right, guys. So what what else is going on? What what else you you guys want to talk about? Like honestly, I'm I'm just I'm just really excited that we're doing this. You know, like totally fan. It, I've been wanting to do it for a while. 
and uh, I've been really wanting to get back to it. There was a lot of stuff that I still need to do in order to make sure this show is exactly as I envisioned it. But as of right now, I, I like I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling good. I'm I'm definitely happy that we're back. And like I said, if you guys missed the live um, the live stream uh, throughout the week, we'll be releasing uh, content on YouTube. So definitely make sure you guys catch it. Uh, tomorrow we'll probably release an audio version of this. Um, it'll get released on Anchor and other podcast locations. I'm not sure, just not entirely sure where yet because I there's a lot. And so I want to make sure that we pick the right ones. So I'm really excited. Have you seen the new trailer CW Superman show? I have. And I'm... I'm indifferent about it just because uh, it looks like he's got two kids. If that's what I'm understanding and uh, they didn't know he was Superman. And so they're about to find out. And so that's how do you not know your dad's super, not Superman? <laughs> what? Yeah, that seemed kind of dumb. How do you not know? Um, I do like, though, that it doesn't look like it's. Because I think you mentioned it, too. It doesn't look like it's part of the the CW, the Arrowverse. Um no, it is. No, but I mean, like, it doesn't look like, like the, the trailer makes it look like it's almost the movie. Like it, the the visual, the cinematography well, they, of they it. They canceled looks... Arrow and got rid of uh, Black Lightning, so they got they got some money to free up. Mm, makes for sense. That Superman budget now. Supergirl's ending. It doesn't look so like the, the whole, CW's the whole Arrow usual verse is like kind of collapsing right now. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Talk like about that your... last big uh, that last big crossover the uh, the crisis crossover like they had that ended ended with like the the Justice League they had all the chairs and everyone's logo and then like they end Supergirl and then uh, Ruby Rose leaves Batwoman mm -hmm. uh, and then they end Black Lightning <laughs> and then it's like okay well all right we're not coming back oh and the Canaries so, were going to get their own show yeah, and then that got yeah, canceled and they, yeah they didn't they didn't pick that up and feel like they just uh, dropped the ball on that yeah. So, but I agree. It doesn't look like a usual CW show. Excuse me. Hey. So yeah, it's um, I don't know. I mean, like, I'll probably watch a couple episodes, see what I think. But Superman is actually my least favorite superhero, like ever, uh, let alone DC Use Comics. You? Blasphemy. Your he least is. favorite superhero. Yeah, he's, he's probably you? my least favorite hero. So who's better than Superman? Batman. Batman? No, no dude. Spider-Man? The X-Men? Spider-Man? Who would win in a fight? Spider-Man or Superman? Well, I think Superman has the higher uh, probability of winning. But um, no, there's the whole thing where, like, Spider-Man is only using, like, a small fraction of his strength. Because if I'm he were to go full, of my power. yeah. Because if he were to go full on, supposedly he would destroy, <laughs> not destroy worlds, Heck but yeah. he'd be like super fucking strong. So, all right, who would win, Thanos or Pikachu? Pikachu, what the fuck you mean? <laughs> like Ash's Pikachu, not a random yeah. wild Pikachu. Ash's Pikachu? No, uh, I don't know. Maybe Th Thanos. You want to ask my four-year-old? Yeah, let's ask your four-year-old, Gabriel. Come here. <laughs> Don't go. Ugh. I know you're comfy. Come here. He's Look. like chilling. What? Come here. Just, I just want to ask you a question. Come here. Okay. Who would win in a fight? Thanos or Pikachu? No one? You mean they're so powerful that they would both clash and kill themselves? No. Who could beat Thanos? I can't hear him. Could Buzz Lightyear beat Thanos? Jesse, we can't hear him. The Grinch? Grinch could be. So the Grinch could beat Thanos? <laughs> yes. Why, why is the Grinch so powerful that he could beat Thanos? Because Buzz gave him a gun, so he shoot Thanos out of the earth, and then he ran it into a shark. So, Bu okay, uh, let me get this right. Buzz Lightyear gave the Grinch a gun and shot Thanos in the face, and it, he landed on the Earth. Yeah, and then and then the shark ate him. Okay, so, it, it, I mean, is that really the Grinch beating Thanos? Because if Buzz Lightyear has to help him and a shark eats him, wouldn't that mean, like, the Grinch at least needs a shark and Buzz Lightyear to beat him? <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Yeah. So we need to we need we need to see this. We this needs to be I, a movie. I, this I needs guess, to be a movie. I guess the Grinch with the uh, the added assistance of Buzz Lightyear with a gun and a shark could in fact beat Thanos. He's, he's basically Batman. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, honestly, if if we go through it, the Grinch is pretty strong. I mean, he could live. You know, he has the power of ten Grinches plus two. So, yeah. you know, if you want to, you know, you want to throw out a, a, a game theory and we could calculate the math, you know, I, I'm pretty sure the Grinch could at least hold his own for like a little bit, maybe. Uh, man, I'm pretty sure for a good chunk of time. I'm pretty sure he's... We, we officially need to get Gabriel his own mic. Yeah. So I think that's what we need to do. Yeah, we'll do a little little kid cam, just like a little slider that like comes here. All right, in here. so I think we've established that the, the Grinch would win. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's a I think it's a really great theory, and I think it needs to be made into a movie. Um, I think it'd be dope. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Talk about your job and move your last few months or weeks in life, and totally fan. Yeah, man. Well, okay. So for those of you who don't know, um, and especially for the old. Fan cave members from when we did the first three seasons of Totally Fan. Yeah, in uh, this past October of 2020, I moved to Los Angeles and um, I came out here to career chase and opportunity chase. And so far, so good. I now work in um, as a graphic designer. Uh, I work in the cannabis industry and I've been able to learn a lot. And there's actually a couple artists uh, in the cannabis industry that have really inspired me to want to. Um, kind of push uh, my art. Um, I'm not saying you that work I'm, where. I work in the cannabis industry. Like weed? Yes, I do. You graphically design weed? No, what? Uh, no, I do designs for packaging. Um, we, we you design do... the rolling papers for weed? <laughs> oh my That's god! That's like breaking news. What? Oh my god! Okay, so the company I work for, they make, uh, they literally produce and manufacture. Um, equipment that leads to the consumption of cannabis. We, our biggest thing huh. is we sell these really big, like really massive and very like small ones as well of presses that essentially what it does is when weed gets cultivated into a specific form, these presses allow it to, it kind of comes out as almost like a syrupy waxy consistency and people use that to smoke what's called a dab. So it's not smoking flour or like a joint or a blunt or a bowl. You're taking dabs um, in in like a glass rig and you take it as if it was like a bong hit kind of. Um, in the current age of cannabis, uh, it hits harder than just smoking like a regular joint. Um, and it has some other... I mean, it's it's really high in THC content, so there's not really a lot of like CBD um, aspects to it. But it's it's a different way of getting high, and it's a it's a harder way of getting high. Um, so we sell those. We do sell bongs. We do sell uh, bowls and other things. We have recently gotten into the selling of the actual like flower content or product. Um, and I design most of, mostly packaging. Uh, I do uh, asset collection with all of our logos. I look at getting fonts. Um, we also sell this waxy material as rosin, and I create the designs for some of the strains that we do. Um, that's really cool. That's that's actually where uh, I'm trying to focus a lot of my attention into art is doing those labels, uh, just because. Um, I have a lot of free reign into being able to design some of this stuff. And there's uh, two artists specifically that I look at and uh, I use their work for inspiration as I create these packages. And it's really fucking dope. And uh, I'm really excited. I'm really grateful for this job. It's a really cool environment. And uh, overall, this whole move has been really positive. Uh, I've been working out like three days a week, um, except for those last week, just because I've been trying to prep everything for Totally Fan. Um, Sample the product. I do, yeah. All right, cool. While at work. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Totally a Toke. Totally Talk a Toke. all things weed. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, look, I, I definitely announced it, um, like, when I moved here that, well, first of all, the stream has always been Fortunately friendly. We've never, you know, I'm never against it. I, I will say 
to use it responsibly because that's the biggest thing. If you're a responsible person and then you're doing weed, then, you know, you're good. But if you're irresponsible and you're doing weed, then that's going to fuck you up. Um, but because I work in the, in the industry now, um, I have told the fan cave to be more conscious that there, there is going to be more 420 related content. There's going to be more weed content. I'm not going to go out of my way to produce that content. But if you see me rolling a joint or whatever, you know, it's going to be there. I work in the industry. I'm not going to not, you know, cool. it's, it's part of my life and, and I'm not going to, and I'm not going to deny explain it. explain to my four-year-old what a joint is? No. Okay. He doesn't need to know. He's only four years old. <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> I'll explain to him when he's in high school, when he's smoking right, in the bleachers. Here. Here, come here. Put these on. Which I don't condone, by the way. All right, no. No, Hello? He's going to explain to you what drugs are. I'm not going to explain. Nothing. 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 Good. Okay. Well, that's good. Say good. no to drugs. Say no to drugs. Nothing. Yeah, right? Are drugs yeah. good or bad? No. Nothing. Nothing. What do you mean they're nothing? Because they kill people with knives. Yes, they, they do. The drugs kill people with knives? Yeah. I mean, drug dealers maybe, but not... Not the drugs. Jesse, itself. why are we doing this with your kid? Like, this is really bad. You like, do, do, we should not be doing this with your kid. I mean, you know. Especially like, on stream. Dealer. Especially on stream. He's, he's, uh, with the banana blitz. The banana splits? The but, banana blitz kill people because in, in the original one, they are people. And in the bad one, Snoky is not evil. Yeah, I'm oh. a bad father. I showed him the new Banana Splits movie where they kill people. What? And that was a mistake. So now that's his favorite thing to watch is the uh, the evil Banana Splits. What Banana Splits? What are you talking about? It's 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 a movie, but it they used to it used to be a TV show, and it used to be a good one, and now there's a, a movie, one. and then they used. To be back, but but Snorky is not evil. Yeah, oh. Snorky's good. Snorky saves uh, the little boy at the end. Oh. And then he dies because he gets his heart ripped out. But never mind, right? Hey, Stinky Butt, you like this show? Maybe Zoe would not like it. Oh, Zoe Your won't like it? Your sister wouldn't like it? Yes. Yeah, they talk about drugs. So she wouldn't like it. No. Yeah. I <laughs> This is a very interesting, uh, very yeah, interesting you conversation. Say bye bye, so we can keep talking about drugs. <laughs> Here, say bye bye. No. Well, say bye bye. No. Well, dude, I'm. Uh, what do you want me to do? You want me to? Do, you want to? You want to take over the show? No, I want to. When is the movie gonna come? It's gonna come to our house. Sure, I guess. All right, give me these. Say bye bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> say bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay i think we're good yeah yeah that's um that's quite the thing there all right guys yeah i think it could be a weekly segment don't you <sighs> no i mean a ask my four-year-old what's going four -year -old. on in his life <laughs> yeah you want me to make a, a banner for that a transition <laughs> oh, i mean you're geez. the one that started talking about weed man i thought we were talking about batman and well, and well, somebody, to, somebody in the chat asked, like, how's how, like, talk about your move, talk about what's going on. So I'm explaining this is what's going on. Someone in the in my chat life. asked, how do I pick up hookers? Would you explain that too? No, I probably won't. But it, this was a more personal question. It was about me. It was about what's going on with me and my life, and talk about totally fan. And I was going to get to it, but then you brought your kid on. On do you want to get the hookers, Mike? No, oh, God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so that's happened with my life, and now Totally Fan, uh, like I said, is was a YouTube show, and there was uh, very personal reasons for why I stopped five years ago, and um, but it's something I've I've wanted to come back to for a while, and we're back. Yeah, baby. I don't so, think this guy likes me. He goes, "How do you choose your guests for the podcast?" I <laughs> <laughs> did. Well, uh, I choose. So Jesse has been a long time totally fan, um, like collaborator or producer even. Um, so he was somebody that I brought early on and somebody that I wanted to keep bringing on. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be randomly because at some point I do want to have like a live session with my little brother, Kevin, because Kevin's um, really big into nerd stuff too. 
Um, so, you know, it's going to change how we do it. Um, we, you know, Jesse won't be able to be here all the yeah, time. Don't worry, Cola. I'm not going to be here every week. There's also going to be uh, like I Unless probably like if something happens at work, I may not be able to be here all the time either. In which case, I'd be more than happy to leave it up to Jesse to take care of or whatever. Heck yeah, dude. I'm gonna I'm or, gonna take this show to new heights. Or having a guest host, you know, to 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 take over. So it's just kind of my intro. You can, yeah, absolutely you can. What's up, guy? Totally a fan here, man. We're talking about news, comics, and the world of fan of fan here. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Please uh, subscribe. Hey, I was down for the four-year-old segment. Hey. Before we get started, this uh, this podcast is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, no, definitely not. Uh, maybe we'll see. I don't know. I I just I'm not a fan of mobile games, so that's something I definitely didn't want to do. But uh, yeah. So like. We're still going to do live streams. Um, we're going to still do be, be doing art, uh, gaming, and stuff like that. That's still going to happen. Um, anyone wants to lose to me in Smash, we could do that too. <laughs> uh, we're going to do community events still. Um, but every Saturday at 12, we're going to be doing Totally Fan. We're going to be highlighting really big news in the world of fandom. Um, and then we're going to be doing podcast segments. And it's going to be like this. And it's, it's great. For me personally, it's great. It's, this is a passion project. And I'm really happy to be coming back to it. Um, as always, you know, like if you guys want to help support the channel, there's multiple ways to do so. If you're watching us live on Twitch, um, feel free to subscribe using Twitch Prime. It's absolutely free so long as you have a Prime membership. Um, if this is on YouTube, um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, get that information out there. You can join uh, the Discord, follow on Twitter or Instagram, um, for more community engagement. Um, we have a merch store if you guys want to support that way. Um, there's, there's multiple ways for you guys to support. That hasn't changed. Um, but the biggest thing is just for me to be able to, to do this content. This is it's a huge step for me uh, mentally. And it's something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. So I'm, I'm definitely happy that we're back and we're doing this again. And I'm really excited about what's going to happen in the future with Totally Fan. Yes. Can we talk about Flat Earth? No. No. <laughs> no, we can't. I don't I mean, want to. It seems to. like we opened the floodgates. We can talk about anything you want. I mean, we could, technically. This is the podcast portion of the show where we talk about literally, I mean, we could literally talk about whatever. It just, it makes sense to talk about fan stuff because that's, you know, what the show is. That's, you know, where we're into, but... If you want to talk about Flat Earth, we could talk about Flat I mean, if Earth. If you're a fan of Flat Earth, I mean, you know, why not? Yeah, I personally believe the Earth is round, but, you know, there's a lot of evidence With to prove. Proof, sonny boy. There's a lot, yeah. there's a lot of evidence prove to prove that it. that the Earth is round? Well, if you look at other planets and how they're round, uh, why, why would the Earth not I be round? I open up a book of Saturn, it looks pretty flat to me. But we, we can visually see it rotate. <laughs> Can we? Yes. There's been recordings. Do we? There's recordings of the planet, of planets rotating on their axis, and it's a fucking ball. Come on, man. So That's why would news. the Earth not That's be the same? Mainstream media lies. Why media. would the Earth not be the same? Why would we be flat all of a sudden? I think all the planets are flat. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say, dude. <laughs> Whatever you fucking say. <laughs> Uh, real quick, I want to thank uh, Abby Giggles and Titus Shot for the subs. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys so much for continuing to support the channel. Um, Twix, I saw you earlier. I saw you drop that rate. I appreciate it too. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I guess that's, that's going to be it for today's episode. Yeah? I haven't been to space. Yeah. <laughs> totally fan. Only, fa only page? I, oh, I thought about it. I thought about doing an OnlyFans. Uh like a realistic OnlyFans that would be like boobs. No wiener. OnlyFans doesn't have to be just nudity, Jesse. It could literally wiener be whatever you want it to be. Um, I want it to be wiener. Well, I don't want it to be wiener. Um, I okay. thought about it. Uh, we do. I do have a official TikTok. Um, we're going to be producing. Well, I, I'm going to be producing content for it. Uh, Jesse, if you want to, you can produce content for it as well. But uh, the TikTok is going to serve as. Um, quick little highlights and maybe snippets, right? So like Jesse used to do totally a fan light, which was if something small was going on in, uh, 
if something small was going on in um in games or whatever like a quick release or something then jesse would just real quickly just these games are coming out these moves are coming out and that was really it so i kind of want to keep that spirit with the tiktok um but we'll also do highlights of the podcast and stuff like that too so we do have tiktok um there's a program or a new app called stereo that i really want to see more about this but i believe it's for like podcasting type stuff i'm not 100 percent sure what it is but definitely would love to do that totally fan in the kid we we'll get it soon kid we'll get it soon i promise uh but we're gonna do all kinds of shit and i'm really excited so i believe the earth is a cube not a sphere really interesting i kind of would like to know more this is huge good job coming back into it i was entertained like a sick gladiator <laughs> I appreciate it, dude. Because, <laughs> oh, you think it's cute just because you haven't been in space yet? I mean, that makes, I mean, look, honestly, if the earth is flat, then it's flat. And then, you know, whatever. But personally, just based on the visual evidence of what we've seen with other planets, including the moon, it, why would we not be a sphere? It makes sense. I don't know. You, you, and, you and your science. Well, I mean, sometimes that's, that's how things work. It's with science. The whole point with science is science will make, a, will make a prediction and then it'll try to prove that prediction. If there's new evidence that's, that predicts that that, that um, prediction is wrong or is slightly off, then that evidence gets introduced and then a new test happens to, pr to prove that conclusion. And, it, and it's ever changing and it's ever growing. And at any point in time, something could happen and fucks up the whole equation or for an example right like if we were to ever explore a black hole successfully like go and come back that will throw a wrench into the gears we make new predictions based on that evidence and then we have a new prediction yeah i've explored black holes and came back that's why i have a kid <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh my god, that was so funny, dude. <laughs> I don't trying to be funny, I'm just, I'm just saying. That's so funny. Uh, so WandaVision inner world could be shaped in an octagon and not a hexagon is what you're saying. No, it's definitely a hexagon. <laughs> just based on visual evidence. Uh, if visually it becomes an octagon, then yes, then, the, you know, it could be. But based on what we've seen, it looks like it's a hexagon. And we just got to wait for new evidence. That's really all it is. But there is a chance. All right, boys. That's going to be it for Totally Fan. Again, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for coming through. Um, thank you guys so much for the love and support. Like I said, uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys are watching this on Twitch, uh, feel free to join the Discord. Or you can also hit the follow button. Hit the subscribe button. If you have Twitch Prime, it's absolutely free. Um, and then... I'll be releasing information as it becomes available on when we, when and where we will be releasing the podcast um, in its entirety. And yeah, so that's, that's really going to be it. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Jesse over here, thank you so much for being well, on. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you for being on episode one of season four of Totally a Fan. Woo! Thank you guys. Carried away. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Um, we will be doing a art stream um, potentially on Tuesday. I'm trying to get back to it. There's just been a lot of work and I'll talk more about that stuff on that stream. Um, so we'll catch it then. But as always, thanks for coming.